falls into three main categories, organized crime, opportunistic attacks, and quasi-military ones. In the Far East particularly, the evidence suggests that mafia-style organized crime is involved in many of these attacks. Ships underway but relatively close to land are boarded in darkness with the objective of stealing cash from the ship's safe and valuables from the crew. Opportunistic attacks are similar but are likely to be less well organized. Locals who see the chance of stealing cash or goods. The most severe attacks have been carried out by personnel who appear to be highly trained, dressed in military-style uniforms and armed with the latest automatic weapons. In some cases, the ship and its entire cargo have been hijacked, with the crew being murdered or put into lifeboats or other small craft and cast adrift. So why are piratical and armed robbery attacks on the increase? One of the reasons for the uh, increases in the attacks of piracy is that there are uh, scarce resources which governments can allocate for, to this particular problem. And uh, as a result of this, naval vessels who are on the high seas go out there with specific tasks in hand. And it is not possible for them always to divert in order to deal with other situations. The, the difficulties are that if it is a foreign vessel which comes into a, a port, uh, the crew may be foreign crew members. The, the government may not have uh, the interest in pursuing a very expensive uh, investigation and prosecution. Statistics show that at least two-thirds of armed attacks on ships occur near ports and that many of these attacks take place in the coastal waters of just a few countries. We have a large number of attacks taking place in Asia, uh, South China Seas, Indonesian waters. Uh, we have uh, the hijacking of ships off the coast of Somalia, uh, off the coast of West Africa, and then you have uh, uh, attacks on vessels uh, waiting for berths uh, off the coast of South America, Brazil particularly. But what can a ship do to prevent, or if necessary, try to combat an attack? The first thing that I should perhaps say is that even today, the experiencing a piratical attack is unlikely. And most of the people also, they think like that. Given that shipping companies know the likeliest areas where piracy occurred, it means the most dangerous piracy areas around the world, on also on the main shipping uh, lanes and routes, the master of the vessel and all the crew have to receive a good briefing. Uh, okay, gentlemen, the ship now is approaching a piratical waters. Uh, as you know, we have to make an anti-pirates plan. In the last year for which figures are available, there were 226 actual attacks and a further 59 attempts reported. And uh, for this, we have to prevent the pirates in coming on board and also to protect ourselves and the ship. When you're going into known piratical waters, the master must check with the ship's owner or manager and the International Maritime Bureau, the IMB. They can provide current information on the region and liaise with specialized consultants who can advise on the issue at every level. This can assist the master in assessing the risk and planning accordingly. Up-to-date details can also be found on the IMB website. Remember that when your ship is laden and you are low in the water, you are far more vulnerable than when you are in ballast. When you get into port, make sure you liaise with the local ship's agents. The key requirement is to have a clear anti-attack plan. This should cover appropriate countermeasures, communications, the roles of the crew, drills and exercises. The booklet that accompanies this video and the BIMCO Shipmaster Security Guide are good sources of guidance.
The countermeasures should help you to get early warning of possible approaches and provide a means of frustrating access to the ship and accommodation. The aim is to make your ship a fortress. Keep horse pipes sealed and, where possible, rig barbed wire around the deck. Have axes or other cutting tools ready to cut through ropes or other boarding aids. Ensure that windows and doors are locked. If possible, fit deadbolts. In ports where the risk is high, keep the gangway hoisted except when specific access is required. Make sure a crew member is at the gangway at all times. Most officials will have identity cards, but advertise the fact that any visitor will be searched. Check that local security personnel are genuine and photograph all unknown visitors. Remember that prostitutes are a major security risk. They can provide information for pirates as well as being involved in drug smuggling. Reduce the opportunity for theft. It's a sensible precaution to keep as little cash as possible on board. Use the ship's safe and try to ensure that valuable bits of ship's equipment and the crew's personal effects are also secure. Consider establishing a secure area and the provision of alarm switches. Organize a muster area within the secure area and make sure all crew members know exactly where that point is. This area may need to contain food supplies and communications equipment so that people can be self-sufficient for some time. If you have to move port in areas where pirates and armed robbers are known to operate, restrict the knowledge of your ship's movements and its cargo details to as few people as possible. The shore office should ensure that the number of people who know where the ship is are kept to an absolute minimum. Avoid overnight anchoring in high-risk areas if possible. But if you have to anchor, keep engines at the ready. If you're slow steaming, Make sure the engine room is ready to increase speed. Communications are another important aspect of the anti-attack plan. Maintain listening watch and the means for prompt alerting of shore authorities. Pre-written emails can be prepared and left ready to transmit at the press of a button. VHF Channel 16 allows for intership communication whilst the Inmarsat Sea Safety Net Service includes daily broadcasts of relevant information transmitted by the IMB Piracy Reporting Centre in Kuala Lumpur, the PRC. It is also wise to keep the PRC informed if you are attacked, as they can make immediate broadcasts to other ships in your area. Remote batteries and independent power sources should be charged and prepared. Handheld radios should be set to charge and then checked. The role of each crew member should be clearly defined. At night, in high-risk areas, enhanced deck watches may be needed. However comprehensive the plan, it will only be effective if it is practiced. Regular drills should ensure that everyone is familiar with the task they have been allocated. The rigging of fire hoses, for instance, will advertise the ship's preparedness. But they're not easy to manage, and exercises like this will enable any weaknesses to be spotted. Maximize lighting. Subject to navigational requirements, illuminate the oversight, especially at the bow and stern, in an effort to dazzle potential boarders. Increase vigilance. To enhance surveillance, use radar. Aft blind spots can be a problem for a scanner, and a small specific radar set to combat this is a possible useful addition. In any event, increase bridge and deck watches, especially at night in high-risk areas. Also, use randomly timed searchlights to scan the decks and surrounding waters. Be suspicious of small craft, fishing boats, boat traders, and be alert for decoy craft. 
When suspicions are aroused, the ship's whistle and alarm should be sounded and, if possible, an evasive course alteration made. Despite taking precautions, however, sometimes pirates may still manage to board the ship. As normal, midnight, I took the watch from the third mate. Um, they, he was planning to go ashore, so we've been keeping our accommodation raised to uh, ward off any, any intruders, and uh, he let it down for him to go ashore. Uh, so I knew that that was down. And uh, I've been on the, the uh, bridge, the CCR, up there for about five, ten minutes when he burst back through the door um, and uh, I saw behind him three men with, uh, with guns, basically. Um, they started shouting, they wanted to the captain, they wanted to access the safe, they wanted cash. Came out of, the, of my cabin, they pushed the captain and the chief officer back in. He got caught up in it by this stage. The third mate had, uh, had run off. He, tr he was trying to contact the authorities for assistance. So myself and the three gunmen then exited down the ship's main stairwell. And we were going to, across the uh, main deck cross alleyway to exit the accommodation when the police turned up. And all I heard, and the gunfire started. At some point during this uh, exchange of fire, I, I got injured. I didn't really feel it that much. I just noticed rather large stain of blood appearing on my, on my boiler suit. If attackers do board the ship, the master should aim to secure the greatest level of safety for those on board, whilst ensuring, if possible, that he and the crew remain in control of the navigation of the ship. So the crew need to know at which point resistance should stop and when they should withdraw to the prearranged secure area. In all circumstances, individual crew members should try to avoid becoming separated from their colleagues. I have for you an important message. Report the situation by radio and seek assistance if available. If the raiders demand the ship maintain radio silence, be aware that they may be able to monitor the ship's broadcasts. Some pirates can even detect the fact that your SATCOM equipment is transmitting, although they are unlikely to be able to copy what you are saying. Crew members should avoid coming between the raiders and their craft, since this is likely to increase the risk of violence and injury. The priority should be to assist the robber's exit from the ship. Attempts to capture attackers should normally be avoided, as this is likely to encourage the use of violence by the other robbers. If raiders gain control of the ship, try to negotiate with them, the aim being to maintain control over the navigation of the vessel and obtain the safe return of any hostages. In many circumstances, however, doing whatever the attackers demand may be the only safe option. If the authorities do mount a rescue operation, you should be aware that this too can involve risks and crew should be briefed on how to respond. After an attack, a master should contact the ship's owners and make a full and comprehensive report of the proceedings in the logbook, submitting a copy to the nearest Port State Administration and the Piracy Reporting Center. The International Maritime Organization, IMO, has guidelines which detail the information required, but it should include the date and precise time of the attack, the longitude and latitude, and the sea area. It should also contain details of any action taken by the local authorities. What we would like to see uh, is that masters, when they uh, are attacked, send a report to the piracy center as soon as possible, letting us know that the attack has taken place. The advantage of this is that we can then uh, include this in our daily bulletins, uh, daily uh, broadcasts, which go out to the shipping industry, advising other ships which may be in the vicinity that a gang is operating. And this, is, this would be vital intelligence for other masters to help uh, avoid uh, falling victim to these kind of uh, crimes. One of the most important initiatives that has been set up to combat piracy is the Piracy Reporting Center in Kuala Lumpur. The center provides 24-hour information to assist shipmasters, broadcasting daily warnings via Inmarsat Sea. It also investigates incidents of armed attacks and assists authorities in the prosecution of the perpetrators. The center is funded by voluntary donations from insurers, ship owners and unions such as the ITF, 
the International Transport Workers Federation. It is a vital force in the fight against piracy and armed robbery. Its services are free to all ships, irrespective of flag. If you're talking about piratical attacks, uh, what we have in our figures is not true. It's not uh, true figures. In, in actual fact, there's um, at least more than 50% goes unreported. The reason, the reason being is that uh, a lot of ship owners or ship master does not report to the center because um, they are afraid that the ship might be held up for long periods of time pending investigations. So uh, of course uh, the center encourage or advise the ship owners or the ship master to, uh, to, to report these incidents to us and we in turn will report uh, to the various authorities and by having the actual figures in our report we can actually pressure a government or a police agencies or various agencies to do something about the situation. At this point it should be emphasized how important it is for ship owners and management to help the master by notifying him of any potential dangers. Their support and assistance is vital and can help him help his crew. IMO guidelines suggest that countries should be encouraged to deal with the issue of piracy and armed robbery and that specific precautionary measures could also be improved. For example, terminal operators and shore authorities could work to contain armed attacks on ships. Random patrols by fast police and coast guard craft should be as frequent as is practical. Undertake radar surveillance of anchorages and monitor seaward access to berths. Check perimeter fencing, lighting and security cameras. Use gate checks and security passes to make berths secure. Designate and monitor a VHF channel for ships requesting assistance. Ideally, the coastal state should respond promptly to any call for assistance. Regular meetings should be held between the relevant authorities to exchange intelligence and review deterrent efforts and to ensure that reports are circulated to the various appropriate parties, shipping agencies and owners, for example. This program has looked at both the specific preventive measures a ship can take and the ways and means the international shipping organizations are trying to combat the problem. For the individual ship, the essentials are Make sure you have an anti-attack plan. Practice and rehearse it. Increase and maintain vigilance. A ship that shows it is prepared is far less likely to be attacked, and if it is, the attackers are much less likely to get on board. However, if your ship is boarded, the best course of action is one of passive resistance. Do not try and be a hero. It is not just the question of the violence to the crew. You can have the uh, catastrophic um, uh, consequences of... Uh,